Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the IndieQuebec.com interview series. Today, I got a big guest for you. And a big guest, I mean, that's what I hear from the ladies. And he's also literally a legend of indie wrestling. Literally a legend of Quebec wrestling. So who better to have on IndieQuebec.com for the interview series than the four loco calendar boy himself. He is the triple X sex express, sexy Eddie. How you doing my friend? Uh, with an intro like that, I'm doing great, man. Uh, man, that, that, that is something. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, John Prescott for having me on such an illustrious show. And uh, the ball's just starting to get rolling, right? I mean, this is brand new. And uh, fuck, this, this is gonna be a snowball that keeps getting bigger and bigger and out of fucking control. That's what I'm telling you. It's gonna steamroll all through Quebec, baby. That's right. That's the plan. And with the big guests like Sexy Eddie, that's uh, definitely what we're gonna be bringing to the fans here on IndieQuebec.com. So Sexy Eddie, let's get right into it. Uh, the past couple of years with the pandemic, Wrestling has slowed down somewhat, but I've noticed that you in particular have, uh, you've persevered and you've been still one of the wrestlers who's been getting out there the most. Um, how about that? Uh, it's really remarkable. Um, well, you know what? It took me a while to jump on the social media bandwagon, but learning from some of the guys, um, when I was doing the, uh, uh, the weekend, WrestleMania weekend, uh, and there was a lot of independent shows. For those that don't know, during WWE WrestleMania weekend, it's the biggest wrestling weekend for any wrestling fan, but not just the mainstream fans. Um, tons of, of independent show uh, promotions from all over the globe come to that city to celebrate that weekend because we know like all the fans are going to be down there. So people come and see shows starting at noon and shows that end all the way at three in the morning for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all and even Sunday afternoon, all leading up to the main event, which is WrestleMania. So it's it's really fun to meet up with a lot of people that sometimes I haven't seen in years. So talking to these guys and learning a little bit more uh, how important it was to to keep up. Uh, first, it took me years before I jump on the uh, fucking on Twitter. Uh, and on the Instagram, I, I was still doing the MySpace. And people were like, yo, <laughs> that is MySpace. You're an old man and stuff. Get, get out of there. So, uh, you know, you, you jump on. And then there's like now, now the new stuff like Twitch and uh, fucking Bumblebee and uh, fucking, uh, I, I don't know, uh, cocksucking friend finder. You know, all these, these crazy <laughs> apps that, you know, that help you have sex and get out there more with the fans. Um, so no, but realizing this a couple of years ago uh, and, and with the pandemic that hit, uh, I, I was like, you need to keep your, you need to keep the fans entertained. You need to keep yourself entertained. So I was having fun shooting stupid videos or uh, even having ideas like um, for like, sometimes you get new t-shirt ideas or even my uh, four loco calendar idea, which, um, at first, it was just a bunch of pictures, but then, you know, enough people said, hey, that'd be funny. You have enough pictures to make a calendar. I'd buy that calendar. And what started with a small order ended up making more and more. And uh, you know what? People are having a good time and they laugh every time I'm, I'm like, you know, I'll personalize these, personalize my calendars. I tell them, what's your birthday month? You could write in their birthday. And when uh... they tell me, oh, triple X, go triple X. I have fun and I fucking write whatever I want. And they're like, man, this is going to make a great present for my yeah. wife, my girlfriend, my mom, my mistress, my sister, you know, anybody, anybody. A girl can put it up my in her she my shed. Dirty uncle, my dirty uncle will love this calendar. So that, that's good too, you know. I'm just there to please. That's what us wrestlers do. Uh, we're there to entertain. So because there wasn't any shows happening, uh, at least – doing things to make people laugh. Um, that was making me happy and, and keeping me, keeping my head on my shoulders because we were all going crazy with what was happening. And, and I mean, we might all go crazy again. Yeah, but uh, a war, I'm, I'm, I'm telling all the wrestlers, any fans, if you're feeling a little too crazy, you're feeling depressed, uh, send me a message. And uh, eventually, I'll, when I'm out of my drunk coma, I will write you back 
just to make your day because uh, we all need each other in these times. Uh, so, man, I'll, I'll, you know, that's, that's what we got to stick together. Yeah. And everyone that's in the wrestling family, uh, everyone that's a fan, you know what? If we can do something to help you out, get you a smile on your face, then that's what we're here to do. We're prostitutes for you guys, it, it, you know, except, except our prices are a lot cheaper. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I think the calendar is a great idea. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it's going to get great sales. It's uh, a great, great uh, marketing tool. Sometimes, uh, you know, and it's you got to do something different. Sometimes, um, go think outside the box. And whatever, whatever you do, whatever job you're doing, uh, you want to be something. You want to do something unique. You want to stand out. Like when you do a job application or a CV or something. You know, you want to be unique. So I'm like. You know what? Even though I've been wrestling for over 20 years, um, sometimes you could still stand out, uh, you know. And, and if, if I have to stand out with my Santa Claus gray beard, uh, again, for reasons that some people ask me, why are you growing the beard? That's not as sexy. I got to tell you two things. Sexy is a state of mind, okay? And, and number two is that I've been hit with a lot of chairs. I have a bad memory. So with this beard, when I, when I sniff it, I can remember all the girls that I've eaten their pussies out uh, <laughs> bring me back. So it jogs my memory. This is therapeutic and it actually helps me remember from all the pussy past, pussy present, pussy future that sexy Santa Eddie is going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. So um, C4 wrestling, I noticed um, in the past couple of years, you really uh, had become a regular on their roster. The shows had slowed down because of the pandemic, but you still seem to be very like integral as the storylines continue. Um, what was it like working there? It seems like uh, they put you in a bit of a more like a different role a bit. Uh, you're in a bit of like a, a faction at one point with Puff. I believe uh, there was multiple tag matches. I seen, I believe also some matches where there was a six person tag with Alexia Nicole. And uh, I wasn't there live, but from what I could tell, there was a tremendous chemistry. And I heard uh, a lot of great things about uh, these pairings. How would you uh, let us know a bit about uh, Ottawa and uh, C4 wrestling? I love Ottawa. I love the fans of Ottawa. I love the women of Ottawa. I slept with a lot of them too. So um, for me, that's always a plus. When I can go somewhere, wrestle, have sex at night, that's, that, that's, that's what we're looking for right now as a professional. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's what I'm looking for right now. If I can, if I can have a five-star night, then, then that's awesome. Um, the Ottawa fans are something because uh, every time the crowd is packed at C4 Wrestling, uh, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fun that I've been there since the beginning. I was on the actual first show. Uh, I, I don't know. See, again, my memory's not that good. Maybe I was in the main event. Maybe I was in the semi main, but, um, that's when it started out. And then more and more as, as it kept going, uh, it kept getting bigger and they kept getting, uh, like bigger names, uh, with one of their last biggest shows when every year they have a cancer, a fighting cancer show. And uh, one of the last shows a couple of years ago, you had uh, Tabernacle the team, the best uh, tag team in, in Quebec, in my opinion, against uh, Cody Rhodes and MJF, two of the top stars at All Elite Wrestling. So that was pretty big. That's huge, uh, so, for sure. So there's great notori no notoriety. And I mean, coming into there, especially when you got two guys from the Dark Order, Stu Grayson and Evil Uno, who um, t do have a lot to do in the back uh, in the back scene of C4 wrestling. So it's good and, and they keep an eye out on good wrestling and uh, matches that will entertain. And that's where me and Puff fall in because, um, so again, I, I was there at the beginning and then for a long time, but then I kind of fell out because you know, there's newer wrestlers coming out, more wrestlers and uh, you know, sometimes- Move around and you go to different places too. Exactly, you know, but um, then um, we did a rumble and me and Puff had a great chemistry and they said, let's see how this tag team could go. And we were going, we were going again until the pandemic, but uh, we came back again. We're, this is the next wave, but uh, you know what? This, this shit could keep hitting us wave after wave. 
me and Puff are on a fucking surfboard that's going to go right through this fucking ocean of, uh, of, of whatever, of COVID. And we're going to kick its ass. We're going to kick its ass all together. And uh, I know the fans were happy to be back. Happy to be back finally at full capacity. Yeah. Now we'll see what happens. I think a lot of the shows, uh, I've talked to a lot of the promotions, uh, International Wrestling Syndicate, um, Fédération Montérégienne de Lutte, uh, C4. I talked to uh, Pure Re uh, Entertainment Wrestling, and all of them are on the same page. You know, safety first, safety for the fans, safety for the wrestlers. Um, let's get let's get better, let's get stronger, uh, and let's come back uh, with a vengeance. So that's that seems to be everyone's um, everyone's uh, plan. Same plan, which, yeah. It makes it makes the most sense. I mean, hey man, if if we all got to do it, let's all do it together. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be back stronger. The fans are gonna be louder, and the wrestlers are gonna be there to entertain you guys because that's that's what we that's one of the reasons we live for this. I mean. I know I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have been able to do this like WWE did without fans. Uh, like All Elite did at the beginning too without fans. Um, it's hard. But I guess when you got a good paycheck, that's another story. But in independent wrestling, guys, we don't get anywhere near the same paycheck as they do. We don't get the benefits, the health benefits that they do. So, you know, um, for everyone to know, it does look like a glamorous lifestyle. But sometimes we're making peanuts. You know, sometimes um, I only get my dick sucked once or twice that night. You know, it's not the WWE lifestyle where they, after the shows, they go and play video games. You know, um, I, I like to get my dick sucked and um, sometimes have sex. But at my age, the hip, the backs after a match, they're, they're a little rough. So I just lay back and uh, <laughs> fun begin. So, um, you know, that, that, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a good time in and out of the ring. And, and it's a great time, too, seeing all my friends uh, and, and seeing my family because wrestling is it's another it's our second family. Um, and and anyone that's been in any organization, whether it's a sports organization or a, or a club or, or a group of, of people, a group of friends that stick together, uh, there's nothing like it when you when you have the, the blood, sweat and beers. Well, sorry, blood, sweat. I was gonna say blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> the show uh, by IWS. But when it's blood, sweat, and tears together, uh, you know, there's a bond that grows. Yes, that doesn't blood go away. Tears. Yeah, it never goes away, man. So it's it's always cool to see familiar faces, and uh, that's why to talk to someone like you who's been in 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 many aspects of of wrestling, you know, promotion wise, in, in ring wise. Uh, so it, it, it's it's always cool to see people back again, and uh, you know, right away when when we did our first shows in the summer, we were starting slowly doing camping shows. But I was like, man, the hardest thing to do is not going to be to go and hug everyone. Yeah. So you know, you got to watch. Everyone has their personal bubble space. But I was like, man, if you want to hug me, and my pants are down, I'm in my underwear right now. But <laughs> give me a hug. Everyone's giving a hug. So I mean, it was. Uh, it was really nice to, to, to feel that, to be back like that. Um, so like I said. Like all reunited. Yeah, we're all reunited. And it's just a little pause right now again, but we're going to do it again. So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, to all my brothers and my sisters we're, and, and all the fans, we're going to be seeing you hopefully shortly. Cross your fingers. Uh, get vaccinated. My third dose, I'm going to get it shot directly to my penis. <laughs> that way, every time I have sex, hopefully I will be curing the population. Extra. It's, uh, it's for, the, uh, for the ultimate good. So, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, basically, when you pull down my pants, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, I've also spoken to some promotions, and definitely the fans can rest assured that when – Things are back to normal. All the shows are ready to go, and it's going to be high-quality shows, and the wrestlers are already definitely uh, more than ready to give a great performance. It's going to yeah. be great. But, all right, so putting aside the COVID part, um, let's talk about a bit about um, the evolution. What, what have you noticed... Um, different in like the past 10 years of of uh quebec wrestling in general 
Uh, one thing I've noticed really is that like a lot of the promotions, this is just an example and then I'll throw it to you, but um, they've gotten really good at making the posters. Like the posters look like uh, really well professionally done compared to maybe before some of the promotions, uh, the, the software wasn't necessarily up to par or they, you know, now stuff as it progresses. Also, um, when you go to a show, I find usually they have like a big screen. It usually looks um, really pr more progressed than like 10 years ago. Um, and those are two things I would say that uh, it really makes the, the product look more, um, more professional. And the fans really, they're impressed by that when they get to the show or when they see the poster online or in a depaneur or in a grocery store uh, advertised. So yeah, what, uh, what have you noticed in the last 10 years in the evolution of, of wrestling? That, um, uh, on, that, on that note, um, I want to say a big shout out to any promotion that still puts up posters because a lot of promotions might just do it on Facebook, social media, which is good. But when you fucking get like you go you you know you get on the on the streets and you post up posters every depener that, or that helps so much i mean the fans that don't follow wrestling that don't know that might come to check out a show and uh, as in a, as someone who's traveled the world I, I know a good poster will draw more people and it gets more attention um when you see videos on the internet if you have a great uh, screen you have a great entrance way uh, you know, professional camera work. This is all stuff that, that goes around on the internet and then other wrestlers want to work there. If, if your promotion looks like shit, if the poster looks like shit, you know what? Mo most likely the product, the product could be shit. That's the thing. You won't know, but people won't go. If you make it look, look, we all know this isn't the WWE. We don't have the budget anywhere near that. But if you can put it to the best of, of you know, put everything in your favor yeah like yeah. i said before a job interview you want to look your best you don't just fucking get out of bed and, and then go you know like you gotta you gotta study a little bit know your crowd you gotta work on on it and if you want uh, more people to come you gotta make it better you gotta give better matches your wrestlers you know have to have a variety of matches uh and, and you know it, it's it all it call, all comes into play i i sometimes tell wrestlers too that, that also you know, your image is the first thing that people see. They hear the music. They see you come down the ramp. That's what they see. They'll judge you on, on how you are. So if you come out in a garbage bag, they'll judge you. If you can fucking wrestle like uh, Daniel Bryan, though, and stuff, then you know what? You'll, you'll, you'll They'll stand change up. their mind over the You know, back. yeah. But you want to put everything on your side. So right. you want to have... You know, you want to have a good entrance. You want to have a video playing on the top. You want you want uh, the lights to be good. You want, uh, you know, if, if there's even pyro, even better. Uh, you know, the camera has to show that there's crowd. Sometimes cameras go on the empty sides. You know, as a, every promoter, put all the people on the camera side that you're going to show them if that's what you're going to do. It's little things like that that make your product better. And then when it spreads and it goes uh, on the internet, uh, and, and people, other wrestlers are watching it too, then you know what? These guys will come. They will want to work for you. So but that's even um, a, a, a trick that companies like TNA use, which is a huge company for their TV shows. They put all the, all the crowd on one side. So why shouldn't an uh, indie company do it? Exactly. I mean, like, I know the venues might be smaller, but sometimes some venues might, some, some companies, uh, there's no middle ground. It's like you got a smaller place, and then you're jumping to another place that has like 10 times the capacity. So it's really hard to, to go from that jump to the yeah. other. So you got to work it and do, do what you got to do. Uh, you know, sometimes have some, give out complimentary tickets if you need to for like um, student, uh, for, for like um, the Sainte de Jeunesse, like uh, yeah. places for, places for young kids, hang out young teens and stuff. Give tickets out. I mean, things like that, it, it helps out. You'll get some noise. You know, you say, hey, we're going to give you guys 30 tickets as long as you guys are loud, as long as you guys boo the bad guys and cheer the good guys. And, and, it, and it looks good for the promotions too. It makes more uh, atmosphere. So there's things like that to do. I mean, and, instead and of having an empty hall, you might as well fill it up with people who wouldn't even come. And then next time, maybe they'll come because they had a great time. 
Yeah, sometimes maybe they're less fortunate and, and sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes to do a great setup, the t- it makes the ticket price go up, but not everyone can afford $30, $40. Plus if they have two kids buying hot dogs, buying stuff, uh, you know, so you got you got to think about that, those people too. Exactly. Exactly. So it's all things to take into consideration, but I think the promotions that are coming out now are getting smarter. They know better their crowd and uh, they know that I hope that they're getting better at marketing as the shows progress. So uh, even like a perfect example, the IWS, um, even during the whole confinement uh, guy in charge there, PCP crazy Manny. I mean, he's been nonstop buying equipment and stuff just to make the product that much sharper that much better so when it does appear on tv people are like wow this you know this is it this looks is as good as and, possible and, yeah and then the people will say this is being produced here in montreal man i gotta get there live i want to be at one of these shows so you know we're all gonna help each other let's make rest let's let's change the image of wrestling and make it look a little more high class and because like all the wrestlers put the work in, so let's everybody put the work in and uh, show what we could do, show what Quebec can do, because uh, we do have a lot of talent here. Uh, we have guys that have been that are in WWE, guys that are in AEW, uh, and uh, even from the past, we've had you know uh, the Mountie Jacques Rougeau, Rick the Model Martel, uh, Pierre Carl Willette, who was still recently still doing Ring of Honor. So it's awesome to see all the impact that we have in the world of wrestling. Yeah, if we have a beautiful heritage of Quebec wrestling and right now is all like, not, we can't say the peak because not to disrespect the past, but it's a yeah. beautiful era. It's a great era right now. We can be yeah. proud of, of everything that, that the Quebecers are doing in wrestling, definitely. Exactly, and uh, I'm, I'm again, I'm proud to be on this, this wave too. Like I said, I've been wrestling for over 20 years. It's been a long time. But to see others, too, that are started uh, either years before me, a couple years after or whatever, like to see other veterans of the game that have been here over 20 years, like uh, Frankie the Mobster, like Lufisto, and still perfectioning their craft is awesome. Uh, to see us all, we've all evolved because wrestling has evolved and it continues to evolve. Um, which even brought me to go do a couple classes because I needed to brush up on some things. And what better time to brush up on things, let's say during the pandemic, once we're going to be able to practice again, Hey, I want to come back uh, again. I I can't get, I can't be drunk every day. Mm -hmm. Some days, you know, I want to look good when TV comes back and stuff. And, uh, and, and that's the thing. So I want to let everybody know that when live shows do come back, uh, you can guarantee that Sexy Eddie will be on a lot of those cards. Uh, you know, I like to travel because I do like my variety of women too. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm like, uh, like Ben and Jerry's, you know, 51 flavors. If I can get 51 flavors all over the world, then that's great for me. But mm, you know what? It's always sweet when you come back to Quebec because we have the most beautiful women of the world and the sluttiest. <laughs> <laughs> You know That's what I'm talking right. about, brother. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, speaking of IWS, we were just talking about a bit earlier. Um, how is it um, these shows that they've been doing at the uh, the M Telus? Like, even though it's been the pandemic, um, there's been some big highlight shows that um, maybe it's less shows, but it's the shows that have existed have been big. How is it working in, because even personally, uh, it used to be known as the Metropolis. Of course, you know that, but for the fans, this is like, in my opinion, it's the best place to see a music show in Montreal. It's a great venue in general. So uh, tell me about uh, maybe some stories you have from the venue and how is it being there uh, working at the M Telus? Dude, it's, it's a rush every time you get to perform there. And no matter when we started uh, right post pandemic where it was like 40% capacity. Then it went up to like 50 then 75 to a hundred. It's always great to be there, but to hear the fans louder and louder and to see all the seats, to see it sold out is an amazing feeling. Um, it, it's great because it was just 
you know, we were just the tip of the iceberg getting back to uh, live shows. And, and I, I, I love concerts too. So I love going out to shows, having bought tickets and having to get refunded and having to like, you know, shows getting postponed. So I'm an avid concert goer. So uh, for anyone to see a show there or to perform there, it's great. It is one of the best venues. I jumped off the balconies countless times when, <laughs> before it was the, the medley. And um, I don't see myself jumping off the balconies now. I mean, there's a lot of younger guys that want to do that. They could do that. But um, it, it's, uh, it's been a rush. And uh, that's the best way I can describe it. And doing a couple shows in a row, uh, I think MTELUS was uh, lenient to give us their venue and to, to give it at a, at a maybe more reasonable price. Uh, and so we were able to film there and to have it look professional for uh, the fight network. So that was very important too. Uh, yeah. We were going to be hitting, you know, we were, we were going to hit some other venues in between as we used to do. But um, again, we'll see how things go. Uh, yeah. You know, and everything's and, and touch and go at we, this point. Yeah, we don't know, but Antelis used to be like every couple of months, it was a buildup. But here we did like three or four shows, four back shows to back. back to back. So that was crazy. And it was fun and it was great, especially for the students uh, who said this was some of their first shows. They hadn't done any Such before. An epic. Yeah, yeah, so they got to perform in front of some big crowds and it, it gets you used to. Um, working, working cameras, working and, and working that much people. So it's a lot of fun. This is like our, our dessert after all the training, you know, all the work, hard work you put in. Um, this is, this is like, wow, this is, this is like really here, the here's like a gift. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was great and great to see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of fans that came back sometimes, you know, two years pass and people are like, I don't like pro wrestling anymore. Uh, a bunch of guys oiled up in their underwear. Nah, I don't want to see that. And then some of them were back, and they had even more fun than before. Uh, you know, we invite you get a get get some beers before the show, drink during the show, uh, sit back, let your imagination go, forget about reality, and just enjoy. You're gonna have a blast, and uh, you know, buy enough drinks for the girls next to you too. You might even get laid. So. That, that, and that's a fucking weekend for me. If that's, a, that's a great weekend if you ask me. Yeah. So as you were saying, like, you know, like after a prolonged break, um, of course you, you think, okay, maybe uh, our fans are going to come back. But there's always that until you actually see them back in the door, there's always going to be that doubt like, oh, like maybe they moved on. Maybe, you know, of, like, like you course. said, like life yeah, moves but fast, you know. You know what the what the best thing that was uh, after the pandemic was seeing everybody's favorite fan of independent Quebec wrestling, Christian, back at the shows, and uh, for that that was that was the hope that I needed. That was that was that was exactly what I needed to get my mojo going, to get my heart rate pumped, to get the blood surging through my giant erection so that I could put on the best shows possible for you motherfuckers. It starts to feel like normal life again when Christian's around. Exactly. You man. don't see it, it for long yeah. enough. <laughs> no, you get the great feeling all over your body. It, it, makes you, it makes you stay hard. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, um, uh, I don't, well, you don't have to pick one in particular, but of your recent matches, is there any... Um, like maybe a younger opponent that you've faced that you'd like to uh, to talk about in particular uh, in the in these uh, recent recent uh, past months. You know what? I'll talk about actually, uh, and he's not that young neither because we're about the same age. But he's he's actually my tag partner at IWS, uh, the Animal, uh, Bob, yeah, Bob the Bob, Animal, Bob the Animal. You know what? Like because um, seeing him evolve before the pandemic. During the pandemic, he was taking some private classes and, and getting better and working on his cardio. So that's been a lot of fun because seeing, seeing him after every match, even sometimes, you know, you know, when there's little things that as, as performers, 
we realize, oh, this could have been better. But then the fans don't realize. The fans have a blast. He always has that blast, and that is infectious. Just like someone that's in a bad mood, it spreads. But when someone like but, but Bob is in a great mood, and he's super that happy spreads. to see him super happy after a match, um, you know what? It, it, make, it lightens up the whole locker room, and it, light, it lightens up the atmosphere, and, and it, makes, uh, it makes everyone happy. So um, he's been getting better, and with the ideas of, of us brainstorming and having fun since the IWS said, hey, let's team them together. Um, again, I, I'd like to talk about my partners, Puff at C4. Uh, he, me and him are regular at C4. It's great. It's like we, we're, uh, we're almost, I think we're almost like 20 years um, difference in age, give or take. Uh, but we have the same mentality and the same ideas of fun to put fun back into wrestling. Uh, it, it's not only about the moves. It's not only about, uh, you know, if, if you the entertainment if you, aspect. Yeah. And we, we make our matches always a little unique. And I think that's why the C4 fans have seen that, have realized that, and have appreciated that. And they keep and wanting... And then they're waiting. They want to see what's, what's next going on with Puff and Sexy Eddie. Yeah, because I'm telling you, when I'm, when I'm not drunk and passed out on Four Loco, my brain is thinking of what more nonsense can I do in or out of the ring? Uh, and, and that's just as important as the wrestling moves themselves. Um, you got to realize what you can bring to the table, what, what, again, what makes you unique, what makes you stand out. Uh, and in the, in the end of, at the end of the day, nobody remembers who wins or loses. They remember some of the high spots in the match. You're there to make, I tell everyone, you're there to make memories. Uh, and that's what people remember. I'm sure that's what you remember. Cause that's what I remember as being a kid. Uh, it's the memories. I don't remember necessarily who won certain matches, but you remember someone diving off a cage. You remember the first time you saw, you know, for me, it was like the, the there was a ladder match with Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. You remember certain matches or even certain indie shows, certain moments that made that match. And so make more memories. Don't worry about winning or losing. Make your memories. Make something that, yeah, make sure that the fans, when they leave, they remember something you did yeah that's every, great advice every dating advice i've told i've told guys the same thing when you're gonna sleep with a girl make sure you make her memories forget about forget about you for a little bit because if you do a great job oh it's gonna it's gonna come back exponentially and and she's gonna give it back to you and then she'll make you a sandwich after that too because that's what you want in the long run right you want to get your rocks off and you want to get fed so, I mean, that, that's how I am. So, um, you know, I so say... So started off by making memories for her. Exactly. And then, and then if, you're not, if you're not busy falling asleep and having your house almost burned down by French fries, John, inside yes. joke, wink, you know <laughs> what I'm talking about? That's why. Make your memories. Have, have her uh, snoring away because then you know you did a good job. Um, that's all. It's, it's almost like a wrestling match. You know, you give it... It, it goes... It goes like a roller coaster ride. And then you know what? You got to get them at that high point, that climax of the match. And then it's an explosion of moves, uh, sex moves or wrestling moves, whatever you want to call it. And then you know what? Everyone goes home happy. That's right. I'd like to ask you on that topic, um, do you have any uh, dating advice for people for picking up chicks during COVID? Because it's a trying time. A lot of single people have find it hard to meet people. Do you have any suggestions? Um, yeah. So first thing, what not to do is don't send dick pics. That's, that's no that's, dick pics, people. No dick heard pics. it from sexy it Eddie. Never it never worked. Again, unless you're just into guys, then guys love dick pics. But <laughs> if you don't want guys and you want girls, then you're going to have to work on something else. You know what? You might need to, sometimes you got to work on your profile. You might have to change things up. Like, saying, hey, I like staying in. I don't like traveling. Um, you know, I like watching movies more, you know, things like that because that's kind of the tendency right now. Um, but if you can, while you're staying at home, try and do some push-ups. Try and stay a little bit in shape because, you know, that's the issues too. You know, we've, all, we've all been there. We've all been fished. 
we get there and it's not the same person that was in oh, the picture. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> and and that means 99% of the time I've been like, you know what? I'm already here or you're already here. Ah, let's go do it, you know? Yeah. Um, no, no, we already booked tonight anyway. Already... You know, but, but if people could, uh, you know, work on that, because if you could be better in person than your picture, then that's great. That's but a plus, even meet better. People, meet people, uh, ideas for cooking. Cooking is something that you can do at home and uh, that could be sexy also. Uh, so there's things like that, but it is hard to meet people, you know, safety rules, bubbles and all that stuff. Um, and if you have to wrap each other in saran wrap, you know what, at least, at least, at least if you can get your rocks off, whatever you need to do to get, to get, to get it, you know, to get that anger you need out and get, a, you know, have, have fun. We got to remember to have fun. So with a lot of places being closed, um, let's not spread the disease, but let's spread some love. Yeah. So overall like a good uh, a good thing like take this time to uh, work on yourself so that when you get out there and do meet the girl you you feel like a million bucks you look like a million bucks you'll be confident and exactly that's, that's exactly. great i think the people will take that advice to heart i hope they do it like treat every treat every woman like they are a princess a queen uh you know and again there's some songs that have alluded to things like, uh, you know, you, you want to, you know, you want, you want a wife at home, but a freak in the bed or, or whatever it is. Um, every girl is a freak, but I'm telling you, you got to release that inner freak. You got to find it, you know, and if you got to use your tongue, your fingers and your cock, you know, you got to go in there and find that elusive G spot. And if you take my course, my master class, you'll be able to find the, H I J K elemental P spots too. So I'm just saying that will be out there shortly. The sex Yeti master class. Oh, so I'm, uh, I've already started to go back to school. So I'll definitely be uh, adding that one to my, uh, my curriculum. I guess that'll be like a night class probably. Right. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, you know, the, and again, it like, uh, there was a girl that recently, uh, Elen, uh, I forget her last name, but yes, yeah, she graduated from my class. Um, if you see oh, that, yeah, kid, yeah, the girl holding her tits, yeah, she's a top honors, top student. Um, yeah, or, Gra- or she's what a beautiful more of a prospect. She's on my bucket list, but I have I have a big bucket list. <laughs> well, that's it. You're looking in great shape. I'm sure uh, you're gonna be uh, nailing them off uh, one after another. So um, the women, the women you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or the, yeah. Or the ma- I wasn't sure the matches or whatever. I want to nail out the matches too, you know? So, yeah. No, Thank that's you. it. You're ready for fighting, ready for the women. That's it. So, um, before we go, how, just how, uh, how about just give us an idea? How do you stay in, in top shape? Because I'm sure a lot of the guys uh, that when you started, I will, I know for a fact a lot of them aren't wrestling anymore. And you, you're still in top shape. Like you said, you're still, uh, you're still training. I mean, I know that you still even do like uh, marathons and stuff. How do you stay in such good shape and what's your secret? You, you know what? That's a mystery to me myself too. I don't know. I've been very lucky, I think, but cause especially now when, since the close down, it's not only wrestling shows have been closed down, but yeah, I love, I love doing obstacle course races like tough mutter, Mud Hero, X-Men, and Spartan races, but those have also been closed. Um, you know, trying to do little things. I, bl- I want to say I'm lucky genetically, but I should be doing more. But, uh, you know, if you can't lift weights, run. Get out there. There's things you can do that you don't need a gym membership to accomplish. Yeah, it's raining. Yeah, it's snowing. It's a little slippery. Man, get things put on your shoes. Get those, like, uh, anti-slip things. Get out there, do something, snowshoeing, skiing, whatever it is, man, keep active. And if you don't want to go out, but you want to fuck all day, fuck all day. You're going to get good exercise you know, too. Do, do DDP yoga, man. DD, feel the bang. You know what? That, that's, that's good too. Do whatever you can to stay active, active, uh, you know, and, and then I'm telling you, whatever discipline you do, martial arts, yoga, whatever, 
It could transcend in the ring. It will make you a better performer. It will make you in better shape. Uh, and it will make you a better person with more confidence. So, um, yeah, it's thank good you for your uh, state of mind, I, for sure. I, I, you know what? Sometimes maybe it is also I got a good shape. I, I drink a lot of local and I wake up three days later. So maybe I lo lost a couple pounds from that. That could be it, too. But, um, you know, whatever it is, I, I, maybe, I might be because I sleep in a coffin and uh, I'm 106 years old. But don't, nobody needs to know that. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. But uh, just keep at it. Whatever you got to do, if you have a passion, keep at it. Focus your goals. Know where you're going. If you stray off your goals, man, you're, 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 uh, you, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. So if, if it is to get back into wrestling, get back into wrestling shape, do whatever it takes to get there. Have fun getting there too. And my philosophy has always been uh, party hard, but train hard. Okay. So if you're going to do one or the other, it's never been party light and train light because that's fucking boring. You know, so uh, you never heard anyone getting anywhere with that mentality, right? No, man. Hey, it's going to be a light party, everybody. <laughs> half a beer and um, we're going to talk about work. And yeah, no, no. Get the fuck out of here. No, no. I want to see I want to see pole dancers. I want to see fucking shots everywhere I turn. I want to have a fucking good time. I want to turn all the lights out and play who's in my mouth. That's what I want. <laughs> do but also when it's time to go to the gym time to run hard to hit the pavement i want to do that hard too i want to feel the sweat feel the burn uh you know i want to feel my heart racing uh and and that's what we need to do we need to have more higher uh em emotional sensations uh you know and whether you whether you take drugs to feel some of those i can guarantee that there's a lot of high action adrenaline things you can do also for your body uh that, that you will make you have fun and and make you live to your fullest potential. For sure, I think that's great advice. So uh, we're gonna end it off here, Eddie. Thanks a lot for your time. But before we go, I know you got these new T-shirts out, and uh, I would love to uh, let the fans know. And please just let me know a uh, uh, a bit about the designer before we uh, before we give the plug. All right, so it, it took me a while to get on the, the train of, of how to do this stuff. But uh, so it's on, uh, right now it's on the FML, uh, the Fédération Montérégienne de Lutte, or Shop Zone. Um, so there's a link there. Uh, and I have all, even all my vintage t-shirts are there too. Baseball style shirts, uh, you know, uh, tank tops for girls. Like tank tops, if guys want to wear tank tops too. Cool. If you want to stitch it up and turn it into underwear, you can do that too. But they have a bunch of models on there. But my newest one is by a Japanese designer uh, called Sei Ozawa. And he specializes in like um, uh, big Japan wrestling, in, in deathmatch wrestlers. And he has his unique style, which you can see in the t-shirt. It's always darker colors, uh, browns and reds and stuff. And it's always got like blood in it or whatever, but it, it's, uh, that's his style. So uh, I wanted to get work done by him. So I, I paid him so that he can have something original, something new. And again, something new to bring to Quebec since there's not a lot of deathmatch wrestlers in Quebec. And then there's not a lot that might have his style. So, uh, you know, it's just something like, unique, definitely. And if you want anything done, done really well to your liking you got to pay for it if you want to get you know if you want your gear to look good you got to pay for it okay if you want your boots to look good you got to pay for it if you want to be the best wrestler you can be pay for those extra trainings pay for those private lessons i'm telling you as someone who just did this recently it's going to do you a world of difference so wherever you go as long as you're training and as long as you're putting in 110 percent i'm telling you the work rate will show in what you do in the ring. Uh, and now's the best time to get ready physically, emotionally, and mentally, uh, you know, get ring ready so that when shows do come back, people will take notice and people will be, man, any show that this guy is on, I am there. So that's, that's my advice to everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter how old the dog is. It's, he's never too old to learn a couple of new tricks as I did myself, and as you will see in the future with uh, the, the man with five pounds of cock meat, uh, 
you know, I'll be bringing that to the table and I'll be bringing a couple extra wrestling moves too. Oh yeah. I can't wait to see that. Eddie. So where can we find you on social media? Well, I'm always hard, but I'm not hard to find. You can <laughs> get me on uh, Facebook. Again, if, if you're friends with any wrestlers, you'll find it. Eddie Dorzowski. Uh, look for me on um, Instagram. Only one naked Eddie uh, on Twitter. Uh, se- official sexy Eddie. Um, you know, I can't remember all the sites, but you can find me. Uh, so those are some of the things that I'm on. Contact me. Ask me any questions. If you if you have any questions during the pandemic or you want to know when future shows are coming up, or you want to order a calendar, a t-shirt, I will let you know how to do that. Uh, you know, if, and if you have a dating question, I'll be glad to answer that too. If you have uh, a sister uh, or, or a mom that's lonely during the pandemic and needs a little stimulation, I will be glad to come and, and offer some services. The first one's always free, but after that, it'll cost you ladies. That's a great offer. So, Eddie, I thank you so much for your time this evening. And uh, IndieQuebec.com interview series, it wouldn't be the same without you. And you'll always have a a home to come to IndieQuebec.com. I hope to have you back in the future. And we'll talk uh, anytime you you want, buddy. We'll talk, especially when the action is back, Uh, you know. Uh, let's keep this, like I said, let's keep this train steam rolling right through. Uh, and and uh, you know what? I want, I want uh, for every federation in Quebec, I want people to talk about Quebec. I want people to, to realize how much, how, how much talent we have, how we have some hardcore fans. And uh, you know what? I want all eyes to be here because this is one of the places where it's at. Uh, and uh, I'll be glad to come back on your show. Uh, and uh, so cross our fingers. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, this will be shown in January. So you know what? The holidays have passed. I don't know if the numbers have gone up. Hopefully they've gone down. Hopefully I'm not dead yet. If I am, I swear to God, I will come back out of my grave to perform and, and kick some ass. So this, I might be talking to, 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 to you guys from out of the grave in the future but uh you know what quebec wrestling is gonna live sexy eddie won't live on forever but quebec wrestling will live on forever peace out and rock out with your cock out thank you eddie